Good morning. We are going to be looking at how we're going to be working with data structures and creating a data structure based class here in Computer Science 2420. We're looking at the idea of doing data structures and algorithms. And what we're going to be using with this year is going to be using C. And as we do that, we have to have a way of actually storing information. And so we're going to use a node class to actually put this together. As you can see on screen right here, we have a quick little UML diagram to explain what is involved in the node class. We use the angle brackets type. In fact, this is a generic information. Now, this will work for any language. We're going to be using C++ for this, but with the angle bracket type, it will be the same thing in Java or even Swift if you want to do other languages with that. Inside our data section, as you can see right here, our data member section, we have a data member called data. We are using the protected modifier um, for visibility, as you can see with the hashtag right there in front of data, to identify that this is a protected visibility, aka it's going to be identifiable and um, used for its subclasses and it's of type, and this type right here matches the type up here inside the UML diagram because it's, it's what it is. And then in our um, actual methods and constructor section, we have a node constructor which just creates a default node, as well as a node that can take a type data parameter and a get data and set data, those hashtag basic methods that we use to actually just you know, do the basic part of information of retrieving or assigning values to the actual thing. And this is gonna be our base class. We're using this as our base class for all of our nodes because we'll be doing a variety of different structures within the course. Uh, we're going to be using uh, linear linked lists, circular linked lists, as well as um, other more advanced data structures in the nonlinear style for the example of trees and graphs. And so we're going to use this as our base class for it so we can actually have some, some structure to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual code for this. Notice this is called node.hpp. Uh, since we're using a C++ class for this, uh, C++ is the language for this, we're going to be doing template based classes, which means we're only going to have headers. And so .h is the C style header, .hpp for C++, making it really easy. Let me click over at that. And as you can see right here, we have our class definition right here. And so protected, because this is going to be accessible to all of our components, our subclass from this, and it's a protected, so it doesn't need to be visible externally. Again, because we're using the idea of having a class design structure, so we have information that's visible to what needs to be inside versus information that's visible only externally. And we have our, const our, header, our constructors right here. And if you notice right here, the C++ class header information looks an awful lot alike what we see for the actual um, UML diagram. So they're really closely related for the C++ header section as well as the actual uh, UML diagram. Going back over to the code though, we take a look at this and so we have our implementation section. We have our default constructor. We are only using this um, so we can have a default constructor because we're looking at the idea of the rule of one on this case for C++ where we have to have a, a, an empty constructor in case we're putting anything into something, say for example an array or some other data structure, it needs to have a default constructor available by just to make it so it's compilable. We're not going to ever really use the node parens constructor for this, but we have it here just for, uh, for com compilation purposes. The most common constructor we'll be using is this one right here where it takes a parameter of data. And as you can see right here, we're using the scope resolution right here which says that this node constructor belongs to the node of type class. And you'll notice that we have the template class type in front of every single implementation uh, block that we have inside the actual class itself. And we'll see that continuing through all of our structures that we're working with inside the data structures class. And then we have, of course, our getters and setters. Now these work just like we see in Java, Swift, and all our other languages where we're working with a getter and setter, a void type for a setter parameter where it takes a parameter, assigns that variable into the um, class associated variable. And again, we're using the this pointer and because it's a pointer, we use the selector operator, aka the minus sign and then a greater than symbol, so we can actually um, assign value into this. And as you can see, we have just the, um, the structure right here. It's really quite basic. It just has implementation of the, uh, the real constructor, the getters and setter, and that default constructor we're not going to be using very much. And again, hashtag include. Um, on this one, we don't have anything we're hashtag including for it because we're just going through on that. We have our hashtag if and def and hashtag define. This is how we actually use the... Um, make sure we have the uh, exact um, file we're looking for. In C++, the filing itself is not what matters. It's rather the preprocessor notification right here of the hashtag if and def. That hashtag if and def, hashtag define, is what has to be uh, maintained as a distinct set. These have to be um, unique. There can't be any um, duplicates in there. Otherwise, we're going to have some problems with redefinition errors, and it's not going to know which to use. So we have to make sure we use this in a nice, unique way. And because the dot has a separate meaning inside the preprocessor, we replace that with the idea of the underscore that we see right here. And so that's just um, our basic structure we're working with. The node itself of type, it, I'm using this just as a framework class. We're actually using this for inheritance because we have multiple different nodes we're gonna have to actually make. As you can see right here, we have our class structure we're using to show inheritance with this. And so we have our node that we just looked at where it has that data member um, data that belongs to it. We have a subclass of this, hence the um, 
arrow right here points to the parent class using this. And our subclass is a linear of type. And again, we're using that template type so we can have it so we can use of any different thing, whether it's a car, an int, a duck, whatever we want to use, we can store it within that. And so we have right here our hashtag linear node of type pointer next. And because this is reused, we can actually point to the next one. So I have me, and I'm pointing to the next copy of me. And so here I am pointing to myself. And we have that right here. So this is where that linear node of type is coming to play. We have to have a pointer to convert to the next node. We have our constructors. And inside here, we can see we have three separate constructors for this. We have our default constructor, again, which we probably won't use very often. Our constructor takes a data parameter, so we can actually assign the value within it, as well as a constructor that takes both a data and a pointer, so we can assign all the um, default information to that. And because we are using the magic power of inheritance, all we have to have right here are the um, getters and setters for the data member that belongs to just this subclass, in this case, the get next node and set next node, which take either a pointer or return a pointer as parameter or a value. And so we have that right there. So let's go take a look at the code that goes along with that. So we switch over to our linear node file. Again, it's a header file. And again, we have in this case, we use the hashtag include node.hpp because we need to go back and actually refer to that same node class that we use as that framework. We need that because right here on line 15, you can see that we have the class linear node inherits publicly from node of type. And so we have right here, we have to specify the type of inheritance that we're using in C++, unlike Java where we simply say extends and then the thing. In C++, there's different types of inheritance we can have. And in this case, we're using the public inheritance so it has access to all the public as well as the protected information that goes along with that. And then we have the key, um, the type on there because it is a sub, uh, it is a typed method or typed class, excuse me. And again, the template class type is assigned to the entire class itself. Inside the protected, like we said, we have our linear node type pointer called next because it refers to whatever linear node we are pointing to. We have our constructor specified in the class section. Again, notice that the um, class definition structure looks almost exactly like what we see inside the UML diagram to explain what's happening with that. So we have that quick way to look at that. And so we have our um, default constructor. And the way we work with the constructor inside C++ when inheritance is we have right here, we have the class name right here. And again, because this is a templated class, we have to put the template type inside here as well. And then scope resolution to indicate who own, owns this. And then linear node of constructor, which says, oh, I'm gonna go to that. But also we have then at the same time, this following colon, which means I'm going to now use this to start the actual implementation of my constructor by calling its parent class constructor, node of type parens, which means it's gonna do and go back and go to node HPP right here and go down and grab this information right here and execute anything that's attached to that. So it actually runs this call. This is actually the call of that constructor on that line. Subsequent to that, we of course go in and we set our this pointer. We are um, explicitly assigning our next to be null pointer because when we are building our structures, it's always a good design paradigm to make sure you initialize all your values appropriately. Again, if we're working with other languages such as Swift, we must explicitly do that. But because this is C++, we don't have to, but it's always a good design paradigm to actually initialize your data members inside your constructor. And so we explicitly assign next to be null pointer because we don't know who it's pointing to. And so by default, that should be null pointer. We then have our more common constructor we'll be using, and that's the linear node type with a data parameter. And what we do with this is we're gonna go ahead and I um, say, oh, it's a date type data. And at this point we have, it is a formal parameter explicit um, saying what type it is. But at this point right here after the colon, it is now just an actual variable parameter, which means I'm gonna call the node constructor that takes a data parameter. So I'm going to leave this class, go back to my object code for node, find this associated um, constructor, the node of type data, and assign the data parameter to the data um, data member inside that um, node because it is a subclass of node. And so that's where we're gonna grab actually that information right here and send it to its parent class using that. And then again, we must explicitly assign this next to be null pointer. So at this point with this constructor, we've assigned, a, we've created a node of type with a actual data value and it's pointing to null. We then have our more powerful constructor and that's the constructor that takes um, a node of type as well, uh, excuse me, it takes a type of data as well as a linear node type pointer called next. And so we still call that same constructor that takes a data parameter. But in addition to that, we are now going to um, use the this selector next and assign it the value of next that's inside this parameter right here. So we're explicitly assigning both the pointers, so it's now pointing to this thing as well as containing this data instead of just pointing over to null pointer. And so we have that basic structure. We'll be using this for all of our classes we're gonna be going along with this. Again, our hashtag basic methods we use for the getters and setters, they work just like getters and setters in every other language we've been using, every other language you probably will use. And so the accessor methods, we just return, uh, we assign the next node pointer to be this one right here. So this selector next equals next node pointer. And again, I'm using a separate name, but I'm still using the this selector next so I can explicitly say where I'm going to. 
even though it's not always required to do so, by using that this selector, I explicitly tell myself as the programmer, anyone who's reading my code, that I know that it belongs to the actual object itself. And so it's a great practice to keep with when you're actually working on this. The same thing goes with our, our getter. That's a linear node type. Again, you notice that I have right here, the linear node type pointer is the return type that's from that. It then specifies, of course, that it um, belongs to the class, scope resolution, and its associated method call. And all it does is return next. And again, we end with a hashtag end if to end the fact that we are actually ending that um, definition. And so this is the structure we're gonna be using to actually build all of our linear data structures. We will see this in just a bit, but as you can see right here inside my structures folder, I have a, a selection of linear and nonlinear structures. And in the linear section, I have my linked list, my queue, my stack, my circular list. And they're all gonna be working with the um, abstract base class of list. And we'll be coming over that again here in the near future in the next video. But so just to review, we have our node class for linear data structures we're starting off with. It is our base class. It's not an abstract class because it has actual implementation for every single component because we'll be using that implementation through its subclasses. And that class has um, getters and setters for the data as well as the constructors that we could use if we actually needed to. And it's designed so we can actually show the process of inheritance so we don't have to rewrite all the code or extend all the code because not everything will be a linear node. When we're doing some of our other data structures, we don't need a next and a previous. We'll actually have to have a different structure we're working with. And so that's why we start off with a node base type and then extend that out for a subsequent inherited classes so we can actually have the most basic information so we can use it more effectively through our subclasses. And so that's what we're doing with that. And then again, we have our quick little linear node where we have inside that, we have the public inheritance of nodes. So we have access to everything that's public inside node. And then we have access to its um, protected section as well because we have when public inheritance, we also have access to the protected components. And then we have the uh, constructors, which make a lot of sense, as well as the hashtag basic methods we use to get the regular getters and setters that go along with that. And again, we can see all that right here inside my nodes diagram, where you see that relationship in a nice visual format where linear node inherits from node. And we can see that structure of what we're working with for that. And so that's where we go with the idea of a node structure and how we can create that using C++. If you want to do this in other languages, such as Java and Swift, Obviously, you have to make just a few small changes, but the structure itself will be basically the same. Thanks, and have a great day.